Hi, my name is Bahadur Ahmedov. Welcome to the course of Single Variable Calculus. This is the introduction to the parametric equations. So by the definition, the parametric equations is the pair of equations which define some curves. And for me, it's more important to understand why we actually need the parametric equations and what is the difference between the parametric equation and the standard equation, which we would have where we would have only x and y. In order to answer to this question, I would like to go deep back to the definition of the functions. If you remember, we defined a function as a map which makes the correspondence between the t sets, which we call the domain and the range. So basically, it takes an item x from the domain and find its corresponding value y from the range. For example, if your, R, your y is given as the x plus t, and if I would like to know, hey, what is the correspondence of the y if the x is equal to the one, then your function is going to tell you that, hey, the corresponding value from the range is equal to the three. So this is the function. But not any equation where you have the x and y is a function. So in order to define, to define whether you're, you are given an equation and you are given a function or not, you need to use so-called vertical line test. Vertical line test. So this test basically tells you that, hey, if you are given a function, then if you sketch its graph, no vertical line should cross it more than once. For example, we can draw a simple line. So let me draw a line or the parabola. So this is going to be a line. So you can see here that if I try to sketch the vertical lines, no vertical line actually is going to cross with this graph more than once. It always crosses with my line once, right? So it means that this is the function. So I can define this equation, for example, as the x plus t, for example. Or if I can define the parabola. <coughs> so let's define the parabola. If I sketch this graph again, so I can draw lots of vertical lines and you can see here that none of those vertical lines are going to cross with the graph of my function more than once. So this, this is again a function and I can define its graph as the x minus two, for example, in this work. But for ex if I would like to define the equation of a circle, for example, or an ellipse, then I, I, I can define this as a function. For example, if I sketch the circle, so the graph of the circle is going to be like this roughly. And there exist some vertical lines which are going to intersect with the graph more than once. For example, if I sketch this vertical line, so it's going to intersect with the graph twice, more than once. So I can't really define this curve as the function where I will have only x and y. So in order to define this, if you remember, we define t functions. We define this as a y is equal to the square root of um, r square minus x square, for example, for the upper half circle. And we define y is equal to the minus square root of the r square minus x square in order to define the lower part of the circle. So the parametric equations allows us to define this kind of circles or this kind of curves using the equations, using so-called parameters. So essentially, the idea of the parametric equation is like this. So let me give you a brief example. So let's say uh, you would like to make a path, so you would like to go to the trip on a mountain on a, or on a hill. So let's say this is, the, uh, this is your path. So what you would like to know is, you would like to know, hey, what's going to be your coordinates at every instance of the time? For example, you would like to know, hey, what are your coordinates here and when you start? When the time actually is equal to 
the zero, what are going to be your coordinates, x and y coordinates. And you would like to also know what are going to be your coordinates here, for example, after half an hour, or you would like to know what are your coordinates after one hour, or after two hours, after three hours, after four hours, and so on. So if I just give you the time, t, so you should just give me the coordinates, x and y coordinates of the points. For example, here it's going to be x t and y t, here it's going to be x three and y three. So in order to define this actually, we are going to define the parametric equation in this form. So I would like to define the x coordinate of the points along this curve as a function of the parameter t, or, or of the time in this case, and y is going to be another function, g, which depends again on the parameter. So this is now the parametric equation, and I can define the points along this curve using t equations, which depends now on the parameter t. So if I just playing with the parameter, I can define the t coordinates of the points. So in the 3D, by just playing one parameter t, we can define the three coordinates of the points. So I would like to give you a couple of examples of the parametric equations and we're going to do a little bit more technical things today. So by basically, like if you are given the parametric equations, how to define the Cartesian form of the equation. So basically the standard form was the x and y. So let's define the equation of a circle example. So if your parametric equation is given as x is equal to the cosine of t and y is equal as the sine of t, where t is going to change from zero until t pi, then we are going to have a circle. So let me draw the circle. Uh, so let me draw, uh, first of all, the coordinate system. Again, so we are going to change the t. So actually, if you remember, the by the definition, the trigonometric functions are the coordinates of the points along a circle, along the unit circle, right? So I can draw a circle here. Good. So the points along the circle are going to give me the values for the sine and cosine. So the x coordinate is going to be equal to the cosine of t and y is equal to the sine of t. So basically I know that this is the equation of the circle because of the definition of the trigonometric functions, but you can easily check this. For example, if you substitute t to be equal to the zero to both of these functions, you will get one as the cosine, um, as the x, and zero as the y. So here is going to be your, your point. So when the t is equal to the zero, you will get this point. When the t is equal to the pi or t, for example, you will get this point. When the t is equal to the pi, you will get this point for example, and when the t is equal to the three pi over t, you are going to get this point, was the coordinates zero and minus one. So basically by just changing, by just playing with the t, we can define all the points along the circle. Okay? So the thing is the parametric equations also have their, uh, their directions. So in this case, so this parametric equation is the equation of a circle where the direction is counterclockwise. So you can define the parametric equation of a circle, which moves clockwise direction as well. So it, it will, for example, you can do this by controlling how you're going to change the parameter t. For example, from zero to the t pi means that you're moving counterclockwise direction. If you define the t, which is going to change from, for example, from t pi until zero, for example, then you, it is going to be a circle. Uh, the, the equation, so the, the graph of a circle where you're going to move the clockwise direction. Or you can change the equations here, for example, uh, if you would like to change the direction of the curve as well. For, for us at this lecture, it's more important as to define so the transition between the parametric equations and the Cartesian equations. For example, if you're given this kind of equation, how do I know that this is the equation of a circle, for example? 
right? So is it possible to just get rid of this D and bring this to the form where I will have only X and Y? So in order to answer to this question, so let's learn about this. So we're going to talk about the transitions between the parametric equations. to the Cartesian equations. So where we say that the Cartesian equations are going to depend only on X and Y. So let's, let's start with our previous example. So let's say you're given the X is equal to the cosine of T. So this is going to be our example one. So, and Y is equal to the sine of T. So I would like to tell you, hey, this is a circle. So you told me that this is the circle. And I would like to ask you why this is a circle. So just let's so I know that the equation of the circle is x squared plus y squared is equal to one, for example, or the radius in a square. But this doesn't look like our standard equation of a circle, right? And you can tell me, OK, so I can get rid of this t in order to bring this to the standard form. And one of the ways to get rid of the t would be to just take the x, like a cosine, find its square and add this to the square of the y. And let's say what we have. So if you just substitute x to the cosine of t, you're going to have cosine square of t. If you substitute the y to the sine, it's going to be the sine square of t. And we know that the cosine square plus sine square is going to be equal to the one. And actually it appears this is the equation of a circle at the, at the, at the center, so with the center at the zero and zero and a radius one. So if you remember the equation of a circle is given as x squared plus y squared is equal to the r squared if the center is at the origin. So now if I would like to know what is the equation of a circle with the radius r. So could you please tell me what I have to change here in order to have the equation with the any radius. For example, with the radius 2, 3 or in general r. So in order to do this, I'm just going to introduce the, like a, the radius here. So I will just multiply the radius to the cosine of t, for example. And y is equal to the sine of t is also going to be multiplied to the radius. So this will introduce me the radius. So if you just take the x square and add this to the y square, you are going to have the r square. So let's, let's check this, x squared plus y squared is going to be equal to the r squared times cosine in the square of t plus r squared sine square of t. If you take the r squares from the brackets, you will have cosine squares plus sine squared. You are going to have simply r squared. So this is the equation of a circle with the radius r. So now let's make our problem even more difficult. So I would like to define a circle with the center at the h and k. So this is going to be our example number three. So center should be at this point h and k. So if you remember the equation of the circle was the center at the h and k is going to be in this form. So x minus h in the square, y minus k in the square is equal to the radius in the square. So it appears we are going to just slightly change our functions again. So as it was here, so I'm just going to copy this one. And we are going to simply change a couple of things here. So I would like to add the h to here, and I would like to add the k to here. So now, if you just take this definition of the x and put this to here, if you take the definition of the y and put this to here, you're going to get exactly the r, right? If you find x minus h in the square, and if you substitute x was the r times cosine of t plus h, to here, so this h is going to cancel this h and you're going to have r square cosine square of t. So the y minus k and the square is going to be equal to the r square times sine in the square of t. So basically if you add them, you are going to have r square, which is going to be exactly as this equation. So this is for example, how we can get rid of the parameter t and bring the parametric equation of a curve to the Cartesian equation, to the form where we are going to have only x and y. So let's do a couple of more examples where we can bring, for example, the equations of the circle, uh, equation of the simple lines 
from the parametric physical Cartesian forms. For example, let's do example number four. We are given the equation that is given as the x is equal to the three minus four t, and y is given as, for example, t minus three t. So if I tell you, hey, just get rid of the t. So what you can do is you can find the t from one equation and substitute this as a second in order to get rid of the t. Or what you can do is you can just multiply the number, to set, uh, the equations to some constants so that the factors before the t are going to be equal. For example, I can multiply the first equation to the three, second equation to the four. So if I do this, I will get three x is equal to the nine minus 12 t, four y is equal to the eight minus 12 t, right? So now if I just subtract these equations, what I will have here is three x minus four y is equal to the one. So which is the equation of the line, right? So if you find a y from here, it's going to be equal to the three over four x minus one over four, which is the equation of the line. Or we can give the another equation, for example, example number five, your parametric equations are given as one minus t in the square, and y is equal to the t minus t. And I would like to draw this. If I say, hey, just sketch me this graph, it's going to be a little bit difficult for us at this stage because we don't really know that standard equation, the Cartesian equation, where we have only x and y, right? So in order to bring this to that form, we need to get rid of the t. And one of the ways, for example, to do this is to find the t from the second equation and substitute this to the first equation. For example, if I find the t from the second equation, the t, it's going to be equal to the y plus t. Then I have to substitute this to the first equation. It's going to be x is equal to the one minus y plus t in the square, which is kind of the parabola, which is lying on the x-axis, right? So you can just, uh, you can draw this. For example, y plus t is going to be, so this is the y, this is the x. So if y is equal to the minus t, I think it's going to be similar to you. I think it's going to be like this, so which is lying on the x-axis. So this is how we can, uh, so this is the, the reason why we need the parametric curves is to define some of the curves. It allows us to define them. And we can bring the parametric equations to the Cartesian one by just getting rid of the t. And we've learned about the three different ways how we can do this. In our next lecture, we're going to talk about calculus, the techniques of the calculus, on the parametric equations.